this week on Cruising New England. A little rain won't stop these intrepid Mainers from sharing their prize rides with us. And it won't stop us from a little Downey's trading either. And I want to welcome you to another edition of Cruising New England. Today I'm in Down East Maine to have a look at some awesome automobiles, some automobilia, and we're even going to do some trading. All this and more on Cruising New England. All my life, I've been cruising New England, meeting great people, visiting amazing places, and discovering wonderful classic and custom car collections, nostalgic automobilia, and so much more. Come on and join our adventure. I'm Paul Manette. Let's go cruising. Closed captioning for Cruising New England on Nesson is being brought to you by New England Recycling. Waste put to work. This episode of Cruising New England with Paul Manette is brought to you by McMulkin Chevrolet, New England's largest volume Corvette dealer. Hi, I'm Sam Grundy and this is my dad. Here at Grundy Insurance, we've been insuring your collector cars with agreed values at incredible rates for years. Now, through our MVP program, we can offer those same great rates for your daily drivers as well. MVP, the Motor Vehicle Program. We can cover daily drivers, exotics, antiques, all in one policy with exceptional service, exceptional rates, and great coverage. See how much Grundy can save you in your garage today. To get a quote or learn more, call us today or visit us at Grundy.com. Find out what's happening. Get up-to-date information as I travel throughout New England and beyond. To get exclusive information and behind-the-scenes photos, join me on Facebook. Hi, I'm Paul Manette, and I want to tell you about my new book, Collections American Style. I've teamed up with Berkshire Hills Publishing to create this beautiful, full-color, limited-edition book. It features hundreds of full-color photographs, collector profiles, and historical tidbits. You'll see some of the finest automobile collections in the country and memorabilia from the Wizard of Oz to the world's largest Kodak camera collection. Reserve your copy today at cruisingnewengland.com. Make it McMulkin Chevrolet, New England's largest volume new Corvette dealership. While cruising New England, check out McMulkin, where there's always 250 new Corvettes to choose from. And a large selection of rare vintage classics, like this 1967 427 Tri-Power Corvette or this classic 1969 Z28 Camaro, to a 1962 340 horsepower Corvette. Check them out at McMulkin.net. The Thompson Auto Group. We're back in Down East Maine. I'm here with my friend Jim Peacock. Thank you so much for inviting me here today. No problem. So what are we gonna see here today? Well, you're gonna see a few of my cars, a few of my buddy's vehicles, and then um, my oil can have it and sign have it, which is, you know, some great memorabilia I've been collecting for years. So what are we gonna look at first? Uh, my Plymouth satellite convertible right here. This is my 66 satellite convertible, 446 pack four speed car. And um, it's won numerous awards and trophies throughout the country. And uh, I do take it down a drag strip once in a while just to a little rubber. Doesn't look uh, you like know. you take it to a drag strip, but I'll tell you what, it's a beautiful car. Is this the original paint on it? Did you uh, no, it's been repainted. We restored the whole thing. It is an original color. We added silver to brighten it up, a little silver metallic to it. How about the interior? Now, the interior looks pretty The interior nice. basically is all original except for the carpet's been changed. But it has original saddle work, which in 66 was really, really nice. A lot of engraving in the seat work. Jim, I know your favorite part of a car is open in that hood. Let's right. have a look. Let's take a look. It's got the secret combination here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like that combo. So, Jim, tell me what you got under here. It's a uh, 1970 446 pack block, Edelbrock aluminum heads, uh, 10 and a half to 1 compression ratio, uh, Krauss Heinz roller rockers, competition cam. Uh, three Holly two barrel carburetors uh, for a lot of get up and go. You know, when most people have a look at this car, 
they got to be shocked when they open the hood here. It is. It looks like a stock satellite from the outside, which they all came with 318s and da 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 da. But if you see it idling at a stoplight, the whole car is shaking, so it kind of perks people up a little. So, Jim, what are we going to see next? Uh, my 442 67 convertible. Well, this is my 67 442 convertible four speed car. It's all matching numbers, and it's uh, got some very rare options with it electronic ignition, four speed, uh, 12 volt posi, Oldsmobile rear end, 394 gears. And uh, we repainted it and stuff like that, but majority of it is original. You know, most of the interior is original, under the hood's original, under some fresh paint. And it now has 34,000 miles on it because it's my good weather daily driver. You know, usually you play with what's under the hood. How come you didn't in this case? It was all matching numbers and stock. And if I find a matching numbers stock vehicle, I don't like messing with them. They're so rare now because everybody modified everything. So, Jim, show us what you got under the hood. Sure, no problem. It's all stock, um, very rare electronic ignition. First year they came out with it. Very rare combustion control air intake system, which most people threw away. Now, when you say rare, the reason, tell them why they threw them away. They thought they were too bulky and they didn't look well. Everybody liked the little round chrome air cleaners, so they'd take that big bulky thing and just pull them off and toss them. And I think it looks awesome. So Jim, tell us about the interior. It's, it's all stock. Um, we reupholstered the front seats, but everything else is what came with it. Steering wheel, everything Steering all original? Steering wheel, all original. Shifter, console. Even if rubber's on the pedals, is still original. Like it's, it's so low mileage. And I gotta tell you something, those steering wheels are hard to find. Jim, love the 442, what are you gonna see next? We're going to see my buddy, Roger Gray's 78 Dodge Little Red Express pickup truck. He's the original owner of it. Hi, Paul, I'd like to introduce my friend, Roger Gray. Roger, nice to meet you. This is quite a special pickup truck. Yeah, it's a 1978 Dodge Little Red Express. Now, what makes this thing so special? Well, it's very rare, limited production. You only made a few of them, 288 in 1978, and that's just really very, very rare. Very rare. What makes it rare, too, is when you look at this truck, what do you see first? You see that exhaust. Tell us about it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the, uh, one of the few production trucks ever made. In fact, the only production truck ever made with vertical exhaust at. Well, tell us about what they have under the hood. Well, it's, it's a 360 police motor, motor. The same thing they put in their Aspen Interceptors that year. And that, that came stock that year? That, that came with it. So, Roger, this is a pretty fast vehicle, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it was the very fastest thing in 1978. It was even faster than Corvettes. Wow. So, Roger, you're the original owner of this. It's pretty rare to find somebody that's owned a truck for that long. Yep. Well, uh, well I picked it up in the uh, Tri-City Dodge at uh, 1978. I, they, it was there, and I said, I'll take a ride in it. And then I took a ride in it, and I said, show me the dotted line, and I kept it ever since. What would make you want to keep this thing for so long? Well, just because it's, it's just the rarity of it, you know? It's, you know, you don't see very many of them. Now, is this in all original condition, or did you do a little restoration along the way? Well, everything's all original. I've had to replace things, but it's all been the original parts to go back. Now, is this a driver? Do you trailer it? I mean, this looks like, almost like you trailer it. No, I don't trailer it. No, I drive it all, all, all over. Roger, thanks a lot for sharing the truck with me today. A lot more cruising New England when we come back in the state of Maine. Still ahead on Cruising New England. This episode of Cruising New England with Paul Manette is brought to you by McMulkin Corvette, where there is always 250 Corvettes to choose from. Order a bunch of parts to get ready for the car show this weekend. And I got a hot deal, too. You think? Think again. Oh, man. Tired of back orders? You need NPD. With four strategically located superstores, most orders arrive within one to three business days. National Parts Depot has quality restoration parts for Mustang, Camaro, Chevelle, GTO, Firebird, Ford, and Chevy truck. For your free catalog, go online or call toll-free. Do you have a child with food allergies? Does your school need help managing food allergies? I'm Gina Manette Lee, a nationally recognized food allergy author, educator, and consultant. I provide a common sense, fact based approach to managing food allergies at home and at school. For more information, visit foodallergyconsulting.com. We're the Hill family, and we are Imperial Worldwide. We are the largest insulation supplier in Central Mass. We specialize in insulation, vinyl siding, seamless gutters, and closet made shelving. 
And we are going to save you money. money. Where the hell? I'm Lieutenant Gary Scott. Green Mountain State has beautiful sights for all to enjoy. To protect our great state, Vermont will not tolerate drug driving. Drug recognition experts are being deployed statewide to keep our roads safe. If you get high and drive, you will be arrested for DUI. Your special moments are something to remember. For weddings, portraits, and special events, contact Sparks Fly Photography. Would you like more information about the Cruising New England Car Show series? Go to our website at cruisingnewengland.com. Celebrate the Big E's 100th anniversary, September 16th to October 2nd in West Springfield, Massachusetts. We're back in Down East Maine. I'm here with Jim Peacock. Jim, who am I going to meet now? Oh, I'd like you to meet my friend, Dennis Patnow. Dennis, nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. You have a very special car here to show me today. Yeah, 70 Rebel Machine. And they only made these just a couple of years. Give us a little bit about the color combination on this vehicle. They made them, they made this car with this color one year. It was uh, 1970. They made a thousand copies. What, did, when you bought this car, did it look like this? Basically, yeah, it was pretty nice condition. I bought it in, in 1973. It was only two years old when you bought it. Yeah. It looks beautiful. So tell me what we have under the hood. Let's have a look. 390 with a Ford Speed T10. Yeah. So this air intake on this is very rare too. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a Ram here. Thanks a lot for sharing the car with me today. Yeah. Jim, who are we gonna meet next? Next, we're gonna meet my dear friend, Eric Zahaychuk and a 74 Dodge Challenger. Well, let's get on it. Paul, let me introduce you to my very dear friend, Eric Zahaychuk. Eric, nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you. I see a beautiful car behind me. You absolutely do. It's a 1974 Dodge Challenger Rally Edition. So what's the Rally Edition mean? Well, the Rally Edition gives you this hood with the scoops built into it. It also gives you a black grill. It gives you these fender louvers and simulated stripes on the side, along with a couple other options. Now, when you bought this car, did it look like this? Uh, you know, kind of. It was green, but it was a very distinct shade of green that we nicknamed Swamp Thing. Uh, so what did you do to it? Did you actually paint it and yourself? Basically, I just started at one panel, stripped the paint off, did any of the metal work, any of the body work, um, got it back into primer, and moved my way around the car. Well, you took your time with this and you did it right. Absolutely, yep, absolutely. How long did it take you to do that, to prep it? Uh, the whole thing from taking, the, I think, the first piece off to putting the last piece on would have been right in the neighborhood of four years. Tell me what you got under the hood. Uh, well, this is the original 360 four-barrel um, V8 that came with the car, and behind that is the original um, four-speed transmission. What about the interior? It looks beautiful. Uh, the interior, we recovered the front seats, uh, put a new carpet in it. We had to find a console because that was missing. Um, headliner's original, back seat's original. Well, great job on the car. And thanks Thank for sharing it with me here today. Jim, what are we going to see next? Next, we're going to see my wife's 68 Mustang convertible. Paul, let me introduce you to my lovely wife, Connie Peacock. Connie, nice to meet you. Paul, oh, nice to meet you. I have never seen a car like this before, especially with the name Rustang. What do you have here? <laughs> it's a 68 Mustang. What's the Rustang got to do with it? Um, because when we got it, it was a rust bucket. You made this your own because you love the color purple. Yep. So you put a purple top. I've never seen a purple top on a Mustang before, so I guess you are original. And I notice you've also matched where the hubcaps are supposed to be. You put a little purple in yep. there. And what about under the hood? There's been a few little things under the hood, but it's a 200 sport sprint, straight sex. So tell me what you did with the interior. The interior, they recovered the seats, they put new carpeting in, and it's basically back to the original, the way it should have been when it was new. When I look at this car from a distance, to me it looks like a car that the state police would love to stop on the highway. <laughs> have been a few times, but not because I was doing anything wrong. They just wanted to check it out. They wanted to check it out, huh? <laughs> okay. So this is your car, your toy. Do you let Jim drive it? On occasion. What occasion is that? <laughs> when he needs to get worked on. <laughs> oh, so there's a, there's a madness behind your motive. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, thanks for sharing it with me here today.
So, Jim, who am I going to meet now? Uh, this is Paul. This is my friend, Greg Michu. Greg, nice to see you. Nice to see you. A 1972 Maverick. Yep. I've never seen one that looked like this. That certainly wasn't an original color back no. in 72. No. It uh, helps the colors paint. It's got it's emerald green, and then it's got a, a house colors candy coat, yellow orange over the top with a little bit of blue flake. The flames on this are gorgeous. Yep, uh, basically, we want to try and match the engine bay to the car, try not to go over the top and just make it look slick and not too outrageous. It also matches the interior. Yes, the interior was done real nice. Uh, some of the interior parts I had to send out, I took and put them in myself, and most of, pretty much, the interior was the way it was when I got it. I know you don't have all stock wheels here, but those really look no, sharp. No, no, I've gone through four sets of wheels since I bought this car, and I think these ones match. Well, tell me about what you have under the hood on this. It's, uh, as far as I know, I checked the code on the motor. It's transmission and the motor should match the car. It's original K-code grabber. Uh, it's been bored out. It's a 331 stroker with an ISKI race cam, Edelbrock aluminum heads, quick fuel carburetor. She's built to go. This looks fast just sitting here. How fast have you had it? Uh, I was up to Winterport. I dragged race it once. It did pretty good. It was almost seven seconds flat. I've only seen three in the last 20 years, but this is the nicest one I've ever seen. Thanks for sharing it with me Thank today. You. You're welcome. Jim, great friends, great cars. When we come back, we're going to have a look at some of Jim's memorabilia, all this and more on Cruising New England. We're back in Down East Maine with my friend Jim Peacock, and you know, you got the garage, and you also got the automobile here. Tell us a little bit about what you have. Well, I've got cans from major manufacturers, minor manufacturers, to ones that ain't been in existence for 50 years. I've been collecting this stuff for like 35, 40 years now. Uh, you know, flea markets, yard sales, long before people were interested in it. A lot of people thought I was nuts collecting all this stuff. Now, what the stuff is worth, they don't think I'm quite so nutty anymore, but I think I am. Well, I'm gonna tell you something. I see all these oil cans on the wall. I've never seen such a variety of oil cans as you have here. Well, what you see here, uh, there's no repeats or doubles. They might look the same, but there's something different. You know, either in the writing on the front side, the back side, the display, there is minute differences. These are all, you know, one of cans. How did you ever find so many of them? Well, I was in the plumbing and heating business for 35 years. I got to a lot of houses. I'd be working in a house, a garage, a basement. Oh, you folks want to get sell them all the cans? They were glad to have me haul them off. You know, and then once they started taking off, then I had to start doing stuff on the internet, you know, Craigslist, uh, auction halls, and I still do it today. I'm buying, selling, and trading all the time. You know, when I look at the collection too, these aren't just single file here. These things are going five, six, seven, ten deep on your wall. Oh yeah, they go all the way back. So, you know, I can't display them all. So any any doubles that I might have or other versions, they're just stacked behind the other ones. They're holding up the ones up in the front. 
So Great collection of oil, but you have some beautiful, all original porcelain and metal signs. Oh yes, I've been, gonna say, once again, collecting them for a long time too. And you know, I, like I said, I just love them. I'm always on the prowl for them. A lot of my friends know it, so they'll call me up when they have some, et cetera. I look around here, I think you're gonna have to put on another three or four car garage just for your signs and your oil cans. I'm hoping to. We'll see what happens. We'll see what the future brings. Well, that's a return trip for us if you do. So Jim, with all these thousands and thousands of oil cans, you must have a few favorites. Well, I do. I like to try to collect New England based oil companies, stuff that involves race cars and hot rods, etc. You know, I've got a few right here, like the Jenny was based out of Boston, Mass, and then the Comico was based out of Portland, Maine. And you just don't, they've been long gone now. And then the Johnson Oil Cans got some of my favorite colors, which is orange and black. That's why I'm wearing an orange shirt, just like Holly Davidson colors. And then like the Speedoline, there's a 1908 race car on it that actually was a race car. You just don't see stuff like this no more. You can't find them. You're talking from the early teens. It actually looks like a vintage poster. Yeah, it does. It, race. it really does. And that's probably right where they got the picture from. They just transferred it to the can. Right. It's you're, really you're, nice. You know, and the Jenny stuff has the original refinery, which was based right out of Boston. You know, and I have more Jenny stuff throughout the collection here and there. And it's just, I know, I love the stuff. What can you say? You know, and I've been collecting them for, well, basically coming up on almost 40 years now. So Jim, what kind of claims were these oil companies making with their oil? Oh, they were making all sorts of stuff. Like the Speedo Lean here, increases mileage 25 to 40%, removes carbon, more power to the motor, prolongs the life of the motor. Just what they're saying today, and this is like around almost 100 years ago. Well, I'll tell you what, if they can increase my mileage 40%, I want a case of that stuff before I leave. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of my viewers know that I love to barter on the show. And I've brought a couple of items here that I think you might like. And I know you've got a lot of stuff that I would like. So let me show you what I've got. Sure, let's see what you got. I have some tags, truck tags from Canada. I want you to hold cool. those, which are cool. Yeah, and I've never yeah. seen them before, by no, the way. No, I've never seen these before. And either. I got some clothing because I know your wife loves these shirts and we have a Cruise in New England on Nesson shirt uh, and a couple of t-shirts for your family. All right, wonderful, all right. thank you. Yeah, and uh, good. hey, to uh. sweeten up the deal, I know you like this sign because oh. it's kind of a unique sign. It and, is. And I think if you put this up on your building, no one's gonna get in. Well, no, plus that's the town I was born in. So I kind of like that. And I like it too, and I'm glad I'm, I'm glad you like That's it. That's pretty cool. But the so. key to this is, is what do you have to trade for it? Well, I've probably got a couple of pieces of iron here. I might uh, be willing to swap you. There's a double-sided Amoco sign. I like it. I you like know, it. I got the little service man there with his hat and all that good fun stuff. And then this is a very early Atlantic high art porcelain pump plate. And this is when they had really big pumps and they had really big plates compared to the little 12 by 14. So this is so one side of the pump one, one side and this the is pump. the advertising. Right, that'd be the advertising. And it's really in great shape for, for porcelain. Oh, it is. Porcelain. You gotta remember, this here is probably 60, 70 years old. It's in pretty darn good shape for what it is. Jim, so. I like it. Oh, Most of the time I get the back end of this deal, but I'm gonna tell you something, I think today I did all right. Uh, I think I think we both did all right, because I'm very happy with that too. So yeah. Great trade. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. I got a buddy of mine not far from here who likes to do some wheeling and dealing. I think he's got some stuff you might be interested in. I can't wait to meet him. A lot more wheeling and dealing in Down East Maine when we come back. When you're visiting Vermont, never drive while distracted or impaired, and always remember to buckle up. That's the best way to ensure everyone gets home safely. Make it McMulkin Chevrolet, New England's largest volume new Corvette dealership. While cruising New England, check out McMulkin, where there's always 250 new Corvettes to choose from. And a large selection of rare vintage classics, like this 1967 427 Tri-Power Corvette, or this classic 1969 Z28 Camaro, to a 1962 340 horsepower Corvette. Check them out at McMulkin.net. The Thompson Auto Group. Imperial Worldwide Insulation Vinyl Siding, Copper and Seamless Aluminum Gunners, Classic Made Shelving Systems, and Zero Clearance Fireplaces. We strive to make the building process easy and fun.
Check out Cruise in New England Productions' website. You'll see updated information about our fun car show series, including the Magical Mystery Cruise, the Circle of Champions, the Super Wheel Showdown, and the Spooktacular Cruise and Classic. Also, subscribe to Cruise in New England Magazine. We feature some of the hottest rides in the Northeast, along with event listings and a whole lot more. Don't miss a single issue. And if you want more information about sponsorships, advertising, or personal appearances by Paul Manette, email us at cruisenewengland at AOL.com. Building maintenance services. We've been servicing the Northeast since 1990. We service and repair revolving doors, automatic and handicapped doors. We can help you design an attractive, efficient entrance you can be proud of. Protect your investment and secure your property with yearly maintenance contracts and 24-hour service. Whether in office, medical, or commercial high-rise, we'll get the job done right for you. Building Maintenance Services. Do you have a vintage car, boat, motorcycle, or airplane collection along with some memorabilia? Would you like to be featured on our show? Email us at cruisenewengland at aol.com. We're back in Down East Maine. Jim, who am I going to meet here today? You meet my friend Charles Harris and his wonderful antique shop. It looks like more than an antique shop. It's a pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you, Paul. Welcome to Indian Trail Antiques. Jim's been bragging about this place. I guess you have quite an operation going here. Yeah, I grew up in the house as a kid, and my parents had a retail furniture store here, and we decided to fill it with some old stuff, and I'm glad you're here. Jim says there might be some old stuff I might be interested in. Cool. Let's go take a look. All right, let's go. Awesome. Wow, got quite a place here, Charlie. Yeah, there's a lot of unique stuff. It's loaded, loaded, loaded with stuff. So what do you got? What are you gonna show me? Well, we've got upstairs, we've got some military section, we've got a nautical section, vintage toys. Yeah, we've got some nice general store stuff here. There's an art gallery right at the top of the stairs, but I know you'll be interested in a lot of the stuff that's down in the basement. I see stuff everywhere I'm interested in. Wow, Charlie, this looks like a theme park ride. Yeah, actually that's built in 1954 in Mystic, Connecticut. It's a power car special. It was a prototype for some stuff they wanted to do for the Ford Motor Company. They eventually built Thunderbirds and Mustangs, but this was the one they showed Ford what they could do. And actually, if you hop on, it will take right off. Watch out, Jim. Oh, we're in reverse. Now, watch out. Wow, that is really cool. Well, it's the first one I've ever seen. Yeah, it's actually, I think that one's one of a kind. They eventually built a lot for Ford of the Mustangs bodies, but. I see over here you got some soapbox derby cars. Yep, some nice old racers, both of them from Maine. This one was from Bangor. I'm not sure what town that was from, but they both were racing in Maine. This one still has the original sticker from the race that day. Wow, quite a, quite, quite a collection here. You got almost everything here for, for a man cave. If somebody wants to decorate their garage or, or one of their rooms in the house, you got some beautiful signs up. There's a, a, a handmade, actually, Coca-Cola yeah, Coca really. sign up there made out of wood. We like to have a variety of signs, a bunch of nice Coke stuff, and anything related to transportation, automobiles, motorcycles. Charles, I never thought I was going to be here all day. This is quite a place, and I never dreamed I was going to come home with all this stuff. I know my viewers are going to love it. I got some oil cans. I got this beautiful lit sign that's in the original container, which I'm going to really have a good time opening that up. How about this stop sign? That's really an old good. one. Local, local too. Piece, right? Yeah, local too. It was right down the road. And how about the Schwinn bike? It's in mid condition. Unrestored. You never see them that look like that. And also a Rambler sign. Yeah, nice little Rambler sign. That would look cool in your shop. You got to do me one more favor though before I leave. What's that? You got to help me load my truck. Let's do it. Okay. Jim, not bad for a rainy day. Pretty good. Got to meet all your friends, seen some wonderful automobiles and memorabilia. Got a chance to meet Charles and see his store. Thanks for having me. No problem. Thank you. Charles, thanks for having me. Thank you for coming in. I'm Paul Minette. Until next time, I'll be cruising New, New England. England.